Good morning. Hello. Good morning. How is, how is everybody? Good Say morning. hi. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. All right. People are coming in. People are probably enjoying. Well, I got woke up by some very strange. It was a huge bright light <laughs> coming in from the east on the east side of the house. Anybody experience that? You know, the funny thing is that, yeah. Yeah, there was this big ball in the sky. I don't, know, I don't know what it is. I remember something like that, but it was six or eight months ago. Yeah, right. It's been a while. So nice. A nice sign of things to come, I think, especially in the market. Yes. All right. All right. Let me find some things. <clears throat> How are we doing for time? Oh, we got plenty of time. Okay. <laughs> April 26, 2023. Uh, let's talk real estate. All right. Century 21 sheets. And this is one of the most beautiful uh, exteriors. It looks like it's in a strip mall uh, that I've seen. Very nice. Where is sheets? I, I know I have even met the owners, but I can't remember where they Ohio. are. Ohio. I want to say Ohio. Okay. Like Cincinnati or something. Nice. Well, that's a beautiful office, without a doubt. All right. What I have today, when you have a dream, you've got to grab it and never let go. Carol Burnett, one of my favorite people. And uh, and she never let go. She came, she came, uh, she came from nothing and uh, struggled her way to the top. It's quite a story. Right. So today, during Let's Talk Real Estate, we will be talking about developing and working your sphere of influence, which is called a couple of things. Usually we call it your past clients and centers of influence. I, I call it people who know you and love you and would like to do business with you again if they only remembered your name. That's your sphere of influence. We'll talk about that and how this data will influence your long-term career in real estate. And I'll give you a hint. Your center of influence is your long-term career in real estate. That's how it's done. You pay your dues now and the business comes in later. The business just comes in later. Can't tell you how long sooner or later is, but that's, that's why you work the database. Past clients and centers of influence are our personal gold mines. Successful agents have learned the value of them and how to cultivate them. And you're going to learn that the past clients and center of influence, this database, is the main source of their production. And today we'll also touch on some basic points for negotiating contracts, such as keeping your emotions in check, and distancing yourself from the transaction, and ways to develop your negotiating skills. So the market today is in full swing. We have favorable economic conditions for many buyers and sellers. Uh, a potential client might say, uh, this is funny. Uh, Shauna, you and I were talking about something somebody said to you. Uh, a potential client might say that there were they were advised something like this, that the market is the worst market in recorded history, that they should not sell their home for exactly 18 and a half months, in which time the market will have drastically changed in their favor. And of course, this is all because of sinister forces working behind all of this. And whether they heard that on the radio or in a bar or from a friend, it doesn't really matter. People talk like that. And what a great opportunity for you to be the expert in real estate. Tell them that the NAR economist sees things differently. The NAR economist sees the market in a very positive light and has done the research and has the reports to prove it. This is still a seller's market, but with great opportunities for buyers. And oh. your own experience and research confirms the local market's stability. Put them in their place when they say that. Uh, review and practice North Star's How's the Market report. So we'll do that today and be prepared to repeat them often. And treat your business like a business. Remember, there's a lot of business to be done. And speaking of which, what's going on? What are our listings? Let me do a quick count. It should be down. We should have sold these things. So we got three pages. So we got about 30 listings. 
All right. Anything new? Anything anybody would like to share? New sales, new closings, anything like that? Um, Taj and Kat both closed one yesterday. Nice. And um, I got my one listing pending and, and we're working through inspection. I have put a coming soon, my very first coming soon that actually somebody paid attention to. I've done it a couple of times and never had a reaction. And I had a coming soon for 869000 And I've already got a person asking to see it when it's available for showing May 1st. So that's exciting <laughs> that that is getting attention. And I have one getting photos today. So we'll go live tomorrow. Uh, 1,600 square foot ranch home on a pretty good size lot. We'll be holding it open this weekend. Nice. Yes. Yes. All right. Portland is doing well. Um, let's see. Doug Carrillo is under contract again. So is Kevin Smith. Congrats to those uh, agents. We have new listings uh, from Mike Fowler in the Dalles. And um, any closings? No closings last week. Oh, sorry. I closed last week. I, I had a closing on Friday. And I have a closing coming this Friday as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't want to keep on talking about myself, but I, I had a new listing come on the market last Friday. And uh, we are going over offers today. We have uh, three in hand. Wow. So. Congrats. Congrats. Mm. That's good. Talk about yourself. Yes, do it. <laughs> hey, that's why we're here. Let's talk about like that. <laughs> and then you'll see there at the top, Jeff Jensen in Idaho put a, an adorable house with a little wraparound porch in Caldwell up yesterday. I expect that to go quick. What a picture. That's a great photograph. It is. So that's a nice listing there in suburban Boise. <laughs> that's a good tip. A flag adds color and uh, it's summertime. Yeah, got a little summer action vibe going there. Nice. Jeff Jensen. Thank you. We had a closing in Longview. Kim Pelletier had a closing. Nice. Jennifer had a closing. It's, mm, I'm not sure if we heard about it last week or not. It's like eight days ago. So, yeah. And there's several oh, active. A couple of those. We have like five pending. Nice. Things are picking up in Longview. And the weather is supposed to be nice, so people might want to get out and see houses. Okay. Uh, yeah the the market is um, the market is picking up from whatever whatever is seasonal. We're heading into the season, or we're clearly we're in it right now. Yes. Clearly, we're in the season. Okay. Excellent. Good work. Very good work. All right, so that's our production uh, company and office events. There is something coming up. We'll talk about it now, and we'll mention it at the end. Kuhn, you have an event coming up. I believe I have a flyer for it tomorrow. Right. Uh, we have a Tycor title coming in tomorrow, presenting uh, an escrow class, escrow 101. We'll be talking about uh, the process, what they do in the background, and uh We'll answer any questions uh, agents will have about the whole process. Okay. So, uh, yeah, please join us. Uh, lunch will be provided. And if you're an Oregon agent, uh, an hour of continued education will get you that as well. That's tomorrow at noon. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'll try to, now I'll be at the dentist. Darn. Okay. Um, somebody who's there, ask him because Dennis uh, Carton at Tycor will be there. And he also mentioned that they have mm -hmm. at Tycor a professional program that will analyze your website. And uh, I think people should take him up on that and see what they what the analysis shows and what suggestions they make. Uh, because the MoxieWorks websites are much more functional than anything we've had before. So if he suggests any tweaks uh, to your website, we'll be able to do those. I'd like to hear what he has to say. And, nice. it looks like yeah. Mary, Mary's planning to join him after regarding that. Nice. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Okay. With that, along with doing um, a letter for a neighborhood. Oh, right. He mentioned that too. 
Great. Okay. Well, we'd be anxious to hear what uh, what comes of that. Thank you. <laughs> All right. This bring me. I'm not going to show the bunny. I am so tempted, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Mike Ferry Superstar Retreat, that is July 18th uh, through the 21st in Las Vegas. So I will be attending. Nick is attending. Uh, so far, we've got Shauna Dolby. I haven't heard if we have anybody else yet. But um, that is a nice retreat. Kind of recharge your batteries and get, uh, you know, get back into the swing of it. Always enjoy those. All right. The price goes up after the 30th, Mary. So if you're going to buy it, do it now. Yeah, you'll save some money. And the hotel oh, right. is right there next to it. So it's easy peasy. And where would I go for this? <clears throat> I well, just click the link. Yep, just click the link. Mike Ferry. Just click the link. And it's all here. Oh, and it'll, it'll tell you the hotels that uh, they've blocked rooms in. And... Um, and all of that. They make it as they make it as easy as possible, I think. Oh, and you get entered in a contest too. The trifecta. Ah. <laughs> Did you if enter? You, if I well, I entered, you entered by buying the ticket before the oh, I see. I see. Well, good luck. Yes. <laughs> good luck. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, you know, he's really good. Uh, Mike Ferry is really good in person. It goes, the four days goes by very fast. Uh, it's very professional. Um, you want to dress up, you should dress up. Everybody's dressed up in a suit of some kind. Um, I really like it. All right. <clears throat> Lots of good information for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of stuff. Too much. You know, you got to take- It is a lot. <laughs> Cram packed. Right. Yeah. Okay. How's the market? Real estate experts know the current market conditions. And the big number today, 6.39, which is up slightly, like point, point 0.1, I think. Yeah. Point 0.1 is what it is. Uh, let's see. And Kuhn will talk about that in a minute from the uh, NAR Economist. That's the only news they had today. The consumer price index we reported last time, 4.98 is is the inflation rate. And that is is uh, on a strong downward spiral. The uh, RMLS market action, I want to just pull this chart up and have a look at this. This is posted for everybody in uh, Portland metro area. And let's just have a quick list look at this. And let's look at the chart. Here's the data. But let's look at the charts. See what we have. The first data is new listings. And here's the new listing chart. And 2023 is the yellow. And look, it's following its its uh, siblings almost exactly. So that's a, that's a good sign. We're getting we're getting to see some normalcy from 2020 where it went crazy. And new listings, 2,623. Uh, that's down 25% from March of 2022. As you can see, it's way down, uh, but it's up from February of 23. It's way up from last month. You know, you don't even need the data. You can just see the chart. Pending sales, uh, 3,045. As you can see, I'll, I'm not even going to look at the numbers. I'm going to tell you that it's uh, it's down from last year and it's up from last month. <laughs> and the same with closed sales. <clears throat> closed sales were lagging behind. We're lagging behind the last few years, a slower start. But at least we've started. So average market time is more interesting. Uh, let's see, average market time. Uh, less than 60 days, uh, a little bit less than 60 days, and that's up quite a bit. So longer market times, but certainly still not this, the uh, the six months that the NIR says is a typical market. So we're still in good shape. Plenty of time for uh, buyers to have a, a good look at houses. And the sales price. Uh, let's see, comparing 2023 to 2022 through March, the average sales price has decreased 4.6% from 594 to uh, 567. 
thousand. In the same comparison, the median sales price decreased two point eight percent from five hundred thirty thousand to five hundred fourteen thousand, and that's reflected in a little chart. A little bump there. That's interesting. And the average sold. Okay, so have a look at those. Become familiar with those if that's your area. I uh, also have the uh, RMLS market action for Southwest Washington, Clark County, uh, and Cowlitz County here. Uh, let's go to our chief economist, Kung Lee at Century 21 North Star <laughs> for a quick report. What do you got? Yeah, we're just going to do a quick talk about uh, that mortgage rate. Uh, after declining five consecutive weeks, mortgage rates rose this week as there's some calming in the banking sector. According to Freddie Mac, the average rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage rose to 6.39% from 6.27 the previous week. Uh, however, mortgage rates are expected to continue to fluctuate in the coming months, affecting both housing affordability and sales activity. And although the seasonally adjusted annual figure of home sales reported in the news dropped by 2% in March, about 34% more homes were sold in March compared to February based on the raw count of home sales. So that's a good sign. Uh, this increase in actual larger, uh, this increase is actually larger than the pre-pandemic historical average growth of 33% that typically occurs between March and February. While we have a long way to go to get back to pre-pandemic levels of home sales, the housing market is making progress. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. All right. The news, the kind of news we want. It's not exciting, but it's it's the kind of news we want. <laughs> stability. And we've been waiting a long time for some stability in one in one way or the other. Let's have a look at where's the training. <clears throat> Uh, Shauna, you sent me something and I posted it. Uh, this is the HUD home inspection notice. What's the purpose? No, Cheryl. I'm sorry, Cheryl, you gave me that. <laughs> Why did you give me this? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about it last week, um, getting inspections. And this is just something Washington has. For the longest time, it was just an information sheet. And they... Eventually, because everyone was having their clients initial it when they were waiving inspections and stuff, that they eventually just put the spots for the uh, buyers to initial on there. So it's just a it's just a thing saying that I told you to get an inspection. <laughs> right. Is that, that still uh, happening, or we, we're probably not seeing that as much that people are waiving inspections. Uh, not as much, but it's still happening. Right. And it's still a terrible idea. Still right. a terrible idea. Okay. So this will help you as you discourage your client from waiving an inspection. A good idea to hand them this. Uh, the, the very official. Um, it's from HUD. It's approved by the Office of Management and Budget. And let them uh, let them sign that. And that would be some protection for you in case anything goes wrong. Because they'll blame you for everything that goes wrong. <laughs> I also, I put that, if you want to find that, it's on the Productivity Hub. And there are several things here that the managers uh, are helping me maintain. If they want something that's available to you. Here it is. It's in the middle of the Washington list. And we just keep keep things that there's they're not in your normal packet of uh, documents. Um, so they're here and it's just a little collection of things in one place. All right. All right. The accelerate schedule and the go list schedule. I didn't log in, so it's going to tell me there's nothing there, but I do know that accelerate does got one starting May 1st. This is a four week course for accelerate and one starting May 8th. And you can click on this link and sign up for that. And I think I've said this before, uh, Accelerate is a wonderful course. And if you feel uh, you need a boost or a refresher, uh, it's an excellent thing to do. And you're going to think, you're going to look at those dates. It's Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, at a certain time for an hour and a half. Uh, I can't make all of those dates. 
go ahead and start the course and go in whenever you can. Uh, if you have to drop out of the course and want to start it again later, that's okay. It's it's a continually cycling ride that you can jump on at any time. I mean, you you should take it beginning to end and, and be done with it, but you can certainly do it that way. There's no reason not to. And I believe the same thing with Go List. Uh, Cheryl, you're more familiar with Go List. Uh, and I know it differs that from Accelerate. It does. It's um, a little more competitive with, you know, we had competitions in the office and things, but it's mainly just focused on listings, getting listings. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot of the same ideas. It's kind of the same kind of uh, webinar. It's good. It's just as good as Accelerate. Okay. It looks like it's shorter. It's four 90 minute yeah. sessions. There you go. That starts on May 2nd, and it also starts on June 13th. So I think those would be excellent things to do uh, during the spring. Yes. All right. Let's see what else we have. Didn't get a video. Got that. Okay. Shawna, you had some things. Uh, like I said, we're going to do Center of Influence and Negotiating today. And you had some points on how to use your center of influence. Yes. <clears throat> Tell us about it. All right. Um, today we're working on building and using our database. Raise your hand if you are wanting to someday get 50, 75, or 100 transactions. Mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> <laughs> we want to remember that our past clients and our centers of influence, whatever you want to call them, are our personal gold mines. Top producers have learned to tap into their personal gold mines. And you're going to learn about the past client and center of influence, the database, if you will, is the main source of their production. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's, let's say that an agent is doing 100 transactions a year. It is not uncommon that the agent has the production due to maybe 60, 65%, maybe more, um, comes from their database. We'll take, well, let's, this, it doesn't flow very easy to say because it's somebody else's way of talking. It's hard to read. I tried to, I, I tried to take that out of there, but this was read by um, Ron Cronin. So yeah. uh, let's go over the points <laughs> about our personal gold mines. 10% of our database prospects will, will give us business every year simply because we're asking for it. Now, that's an important number, and if you think about it, if you have 60 or 70 people, then you'll get like six or seven deals. So, but obviously that's not going to work unless you're actually making those calls. And uh, that's just six or seven transactions that could add up to be quite a bit of money. So we need to be, we need to be calling them. And 10% is the number. 10% is the number. From a quality database. From a quality database, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now what we learn is to build that database to the larger number, say 500 or 1,000 names, as quickly as possible. That just might take a couple of years. That's honest. Yeah, it could take that long. We're not going to build it just by adding people who don't belong there. And I bolded this part because it really stood out to me. We're going to build it with people that belong in the database that are <clears throat> that you're actually going to call. And he went into detail about that. Some refer to it as your sphere of influence, but it's all speaking about the same thing. Like John said, people who know you and like you and trust you and will refer you business. Imagine if we can get 100 and you're working the system, which we'll explain in a minute. And now we're producing 50 transaction a year just from the data bank. I mean, it makes makes sense. If you got 500 good people in your sphere and you're calling them, that's that 10% equals 50 transactions. So that would be <laughs> that would be amazing. <clears throat> so be willing to but make the apology. Shauna, if you don't believe it, come to Las Vegas and you're gonna meet a lot of people who actually do that. Right. That, I know. Eye opener. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it is. And some people 
want to do that kind of business. Some people don't, and that's okay too. Sure. <laughs> but I think everybody wants to do more. Right. Everybody wants to do at least one more. Yes. Yeah. Or 10, 10 or 20 more. Or 10 or 20, yeah. <laughs> yes. And why wouldn't you want to call your people if they're going to give you more business? Yep. Yep. So as we build the database, we're going to run into some challenges. Don't hesitate to call the people in your database that you haven't spoken to in a while. We don't want to hesitate to call them. Maybe you haven't called them for a really long time. Maybe it's been a year or two and you have to make that apology call. Just basically apologizing for having lost touch and take ownership of it and let them know that you're committed to making contact more often. And that there's a script for that. We go over that sometimes and it's a good script. And we, it's, it, it kind of feels like it's not a fib either because we all just got a new database, it's Moxie. So we are updating those databases and it, calling them up and saying, you know, you're going to start getting a different kind of email from me. Things are going to look a little different. Just want to make sure that I still have all your information. Sorry, I haven't called, but, you know, now I have a better system in place. So you'll be making those calls and they're not sitting around thinking about horrible things about you. <laughs> we're always we're always afraid. Oh, well, you know, at the end, they had something go wrong on the, and you haven't spoke to them since. We'll call them and find out and see. And I, I, I'm i pretty sure that most of those people that you have in your head that you that are upset or they're not going to be. They're happy. They're glad you called. And, you know, just just make the call and find out. And if and if they hate you, take them off your list. Right. <laughs> so move on. Don't yeah. apologize for building your business, right? Exactly. Sometimes it's surprising when you call them and they are your biggest advocates, the ones that were the most difficult clients. Right. I hear those stories often. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten re uh, testimonials from people that flat out say, I was horrible to work with. <laughs> and she stuck in there. And they do become um, your advocate. I. I have one guy who has a house up in, I don't know, somewhere clear up Whidbey Island, somewhere really far north, but he's insisting that I'm going to be working with him because I stuck through him. His, I mean, the guy would yell at me and hang up on me and then call me back the next day and say, are you mad at me? <laughs> <laughs> so he knew he was hard. So make those calls and like Shrub said, you never know, they could be very willing to refer you. Um, keep them updated and become their real estate resource, which is our main goal here. So make sure I didn't did I go out of order here. Oh, I already talked about that. Yeah. 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 We often make up a story. Oh, I can't call them. We just kind of talked about that. I had my own scenario there, so you can scroll some more. If there's someone on there that doesn't like you, then take them off. We we already talked about that. Uh, this is your list um, of your people that are supporting you. These are the ones that you're going to be speaking with on a regular basis, mailing them on a reg regular basis. So that... I never really thought about that, but if you pick up your, your list and you make a call, you're like, oh, I don't want to talk to that person. Well, why is that person in your list? Mm -hmm. Take them off your list. So when you go to your list and start calling, everybody on there you want to talk to. And I think I need to do some cleanup in my list because there's some that I don't really want to call and they never picked up. So maybe it's time to, to remove them and quit mailing them Christmas cards. Who knows? If you put them in Moxie, you'll have five that pop up every day for you to call right away. You don't even have to think about it. Yes, that's right. Speak to your center of influence four times a year. What yeah. What do I have to do with these with with this group of people? Well, it's not complicated, so, so write it down. We must speak to them, our past clients in our, in our sphere. 
We must speak to them a minimum of four times a year. Minimum four times a year. He repeats it. Okay, speak to them. <laughs> Can I text them? Uh, no, you have to. You have to call them. Can I email them? Sure, but you also have to call them. You can do those things, but you can call them. And if they don't pick up, you can you can leave a message and that counts as one of your calls. So that's a minimum, minimum four times. And I think somewhere else in here, he says the people, in, he breaks it out. We'll, we'll go over that in a minute. You might call them more if they're people that are referring you, you know, quite frequently. You know what I, I just thought of? Just the fact that you do that uh, reinforces to them that you're still in the business and still looking for work, even if it, even if you never end up speaking to them. The fact that you tried to reach out, they know why you're calling. So that, that's beneficial as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I've tried to call people and they'll just text me. I don't have anybody to refer you right now. Mm -hmm. That is a text I get back from them. Like, okay, well. Mm -hmm. maybe we could have coffee sometime anyway or something. <laughs> it's like some of these people just like, no, I know why you're calling it. I don't have it. But, <laughs> but this is a good, a good point too. What if you're new in the business? Does everybody you know, know that you're in the business now? You need to call them and tell them everybody you know. Because you, you just never know where that next lead's going to come from. Use your mailers to your advantage. You want to mail them something at least every 90 days, four times a year. Just get in the habit of sending out a mailer every quarter and giving them a phone call every quarter. Uh, what do you want to send? Well, that's up to you. You can send a letter. You can send a postcard. Um, some people like newsletters. Um, a flyer, you know, maybe a flyer with some different listings on it that you have listed so they can see how busy you are, um, a just listed postcard. There's all sorts of things that you could mail them. And then, you know, that's a subject to call them about too. Um, you could do happy holiday real estate type of card. Happy holidays real estate card card. It's really not that important what it is. It just shows that you're working. Okay, we just said that. Uh, you're work, you're active and you're in the business. You have things going on, and this is how you're going to become the real estate resource. What are you? Tar that's what you're targeting, and I think that's great that he brings that up because you don't want to just call. And I don't know if if we scroll some more if it says it, but I remember that he said you don't want to just call and say hey, which his the scripts do do this, but. You don't want to always just call and say, can you refer me any business right now? You want to have something of value. Um, yes, he does. That's not the point. It, it can be awkward for everybody if you're just calling and say, do you have anybody to refer me? Okay, goodbye. So no, you don't want to do that. You want to have something of value, something to talk about, some sort of uh, resource for them. And in one of the um, apology call scripts, they say, um, you know, I have a list of contractors or a list of people. Would you like that list? Or, you know, I'm your, your resource for all things real estate. And that's, that's a ahead. good way when you're leaving a message to get people to call you back too. is like, you know, I, I had, I have something I thought you'd be interested in or some information I thought you might find valuable or whatever. You can leave something, maybe they'll be more likely to call you back. Sure. And it gives an example. So if you if you're needing supplies for things or you have hobbies, you go to those places to get those things. So you want your clients when they think of anything that has to do with their house, um, anything about real estate that they're going to think of you. I have a lot of people who call me and ask for uh, lender information because they know I have contacts in in that. So. Anytime they think of it, it's great when they give you a call and always welcome those calls and, and let them know to call anytime. Yeah, scroll so make, 
Yeah, what, you, I'm I'm reading it because I I think sometimes I'm repeating myself a little bit. Okay. I get it. I get ahead. <laughs> How many right now on your list don't belong there? We kind of talked about get rid of them. I want these people. Um, you you want the people to be the people you like to call and that they're happy to talk to you and that you're getting business from. So, I guess it's time to clean up the database if if you're not getting any response from those people. I have sold a house to a guy, one of my very first sales, and I've called him so many times and I've never got to talk to him. He never calls me back. And his name is Nick Schneckla or something like that. And I'm always accidentally texting him instead of Nick Schultz. Oh. And one time he texted me back and said, wrong, Nick. And I was like, oh, you are alive. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, I got him to talk to me. <laughs> Good ploy. Yeah, yeah right. Mm. All right, you want to scroll a little bit more? Yeah. Okay. Oh, create an oh, A yeah. and B list in your database. I love this one. Yeah. Um, I actually have more than just the two. I have multiple. I have A and A+. plus. B and I have C and D and the D is just people I don't want to lose their names, but I'm not ever calling them. Um, <clears throat> C is usually like internet leads that I really don't have a relationship with, but they have the name, phone number and, and email address. So I might as well put them somewhere. And B is usually just my past clients. And um, A is people that I've done business with more than once. And A plus is people that have done business with me, with me more than once and have referred me more than once. These are people that are re constantly getting me business. And so they get a little bit more than just the A treat, they get A plus. And I let those people know they're on that list and it makes them feel good. So, um, <clears throat> okay. Anyone? Um, so I had described what I do, and this is what he, his A-list is the, the ones that get calls every 30 days. Um, John, you said that might be too much in your opinion, every 30 days, maybe. But um, the people it's that on are on my, what it was that? Who, it depends on the list. Depends on yeah. who they are. You, you might have a list that you'd want to call every 30 days. Sure. Um and then the people on the B list would be called at least every 90 days. So that's four times a year. Uh, anyone that's ever given you a referral. Can you scroll a little, please? Yep. <laughs> Thank you. My, my papers are not with yours. I don't know what happened. Anyone, anyone that's ever given you a referral or said that they would give you a referral, I would have them on my A-list as well. And they hear from you every month. I give them a monthly real estate report, just a quick check-in call and see if I can contribute to them. And if they, are, if they happen to know anyone that could use my services. And the B list is every 90 days. Every 90 so, days. Oh, every 90 days. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. So four times a year. Four so everybody four times a year. Yeah. Center of influence examples of outreach. Obviously, we have a script. We have the script for past clients and database and the database. When you speak to them, you want to always bring value to the call. We don't want to just make it a call and where we're asking and only asking for a referral. We don't want to make, make it like that. We want to make it so their resource that we're their resource, uh, we're providing value and return referrals will just come. So de determine themes for the call. And that's always a good idea to have an idea. Yes. Yeah. So when you call, what you're going to speak about, so you'll know what you're going to speak about. Maybe it's the topic in the mailer. Maybe you could use that. You know, if you're going to make a quick market summary, that's just like, that's an easy one since John does all the work for us. All we have to do is go to our, our hub and click on it and we have something to talk about. And we have the interest rates. We have all sorts of information. And, and 
honestly, usually that's what people want to hear from us is market report. And that's valuable to them. Right. Share market statistics and valuable information, a vendor list. We've talked about that. Uh, that's always something good that you can send out to them and, you know, give them a call and, and see if they, they received it. Just that's another good topic. We've already discussed that. So the, just have something to talk about when you give them the call. <laughs> and <clears throat> when you bring value, um, they're going to they're gonna want to talk to you. If, if they know you're only calling for like one person, just text me back, um, for a, a referral, then they may not want to talk to you as often. So um, think of something good to talk about and they'll be, hap they'll be happy and they'll be more excited to talk to you about it. Does anybody have any other ideas of things besides the market and a vendor list that they use? You know, yeah, I mean, I just really agree with uh, getting in touch with people four times a year. You know, I think the quarter is perfect. Um, but like John said, you know, I suppose there's a few other people you want to get in contact with more and you just never know who they know. And if they refer you a lot of business, they're going to become your friends. So you'll be like, in, you'll be okay with talking to them once a month. Yeah. And vendors. I yeah. I like I, it to bring up vendors. They, I, we've often had that vendors that say, "Oh yeah, I've worked with this company or this agent, you know, quite a bit, and it's always gone really smooth." You can also call and invite them to some sort of event at your office or some kind of event in the community that your office is involved in. Right. Like Kevin's <laughs> thing, the bands, brews, and and what is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can imagine he's making a lot of calls about that, isn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, well I, I wasn't invited to that. That sounds good. It's it was on uh, this weekend, I believe, in ah. at the Roxy Theater. We oh. have our own Roxy Theater, not just Portland. <laughs> right. It's the Longview Roxy. Yes. Oh, the that's... bands, brews, and bites. Another, like, another thing to talk about, like, so say you have a success story of some, some. Buddy, you helped um, some kind of story that you can talk about that they might relate to. Um, you know, uh, they had a like like my fixer. I, that's gonna end it. I hope in a really positive way for for this lady. She had so much work to do, but you know, I got her a buyer without her having to do the work, and uh, she got to move to where she wanted to go. And Hopefully that'll be a happy ending story that I can talk about to people. So that's another idea, I guess, is a story. I have seen some ideas of um, calling and calling, call and say it's, you know, it's a very important day. And I just wanted to get a hold of you because, you know, it was the day you were born or the day um, you bought your house. House diversities are always really good. Good idea. Yeah. Now, those are good <clears throat> ideas. And the postcards, you know, there are so many postcards either from the Century 21 uh, hub or anywhere directed to real estate. And they traditionally have, you know, tips on organizing your house, organizing your yard, uh, recipes. If you want to send them 12 recipes a year, those are all very valuable because um, it, they're interesting. People will look at it. And uh, your name, your name is on there. So that's a good thing to do. But you're right. You're the real estate professional. So, yes, the market. The market is is uh, you always want to say something about the market. Can you scroll a little bit? Yep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Look at, I wrote my own little thing in there, duh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wait for them to call you. I oh, mean, really? <laughs> you're gonna be waiting a long time because mm. they're not sitting around thinking about you. Um, mm. So it's your job. So one of the biggest things, um, the biggest mistakes is just sitting around waiting for people to call you and their referrals. Don't wait for them to call you. It's your job to call. Uh, give them some information and ask them if, 
if they or anyone they know could use your services. Be specific. When you ask for referrals, you're looking for a 10 day, two week referral. Always ask for those. They, they'll tell you about the 60 and 90 days and six months, but uh, you wanna ask specifically for somebody that's looking right now and you may just get it. It was funny, we were doing our role play yesterday and I said yes instead of no, like the script said, and it just threw the person off that was reading it because we don't, we're not always prepared for the yes. So have all your scripts ready when you're making your call so you can grab the right one. Um, if you decide, um, if you decide you're going to call five or six social, that's what Moxie has is the five or six. And you don't even have to decide who it is. You could have your, if you have that set up, you have your house anniversary dates in there. Everything's there. And scroll for a little bit more. Okay. You you have to do the math yourself. I mean, obviously, if you want to do 100, you may be making 10 calls a day instead of five. Um, but as long as you're making the calls, you can leave the message. The message is the same as if they would have answered, and that counts as one of, one of your five or six that you're supposed to be calling that day. Um, you don't have to ask them to call you back if you don't need, you know, I guess if you're doing this on a regular basis, you're going to be busy enough and you don't need everybody to call you back, um, but you've left the message and they know that you're still in business. They know everything, you know, if they need anything, they're going to give you a call. Nice. And consistency. Yeah. <laughs> this is the key. That is always the key for everything, isn't it? It, consistency is essential when they make a market report from when they get a market report from you every month uh, they get something from you every month and they see it there in front of them they're going to be thinking about you um, if you're doing it sporadically you're going to get sporadic um, results so consistency brings back consistent results it's about the numbers it's about the number of people you call So you want to be training, training your contacts to think of you for everything real estate. And that's important. Train them so that when they hear someone looking to buy or sell, they reach out you immediately, not the week after they've already ch chosen a real estate agent. That This has got to be right away. So you've got to ask them, um, could you, could you please call me immediately if you know somebody who's going to buy or sell real estate? And, you know, make sure that you're, you think them. And the last thought is that you're trying to build your reputation as their real estate resource. Keep putting out the information from you. They get reports, values, statistic, legislation information, and tips about house, about their house. So that your database thinks of you when anything related to that home, they think of you. You're training them. You're training, <clears throat> training your clients. You're training your A list and your B list. Also, one thing to put out there is that it's okay to ask people that you're currently working with for referrals as well. Sometimes you're going to be talking to them a lot during the process. So just throw it out there every once in a while. Hey, do you know anybody else that wants to buy a house? Especially after a win, you know, like you get through the inspection or the appraisal comes in good and they're feeling happy, ask for a referral. That's the best time. <laughs> That's a great time. Yes, thank awesome. you. I wanna, there's some follow-up information on the uh, on the Center of Influence. Under our training hub, this is the uh, productivity hub. Inside is a training hub and it's password protected. The password is North Star with a capital N. And what you'll find in here uh, is our training programs. And over on the left is the 21 point business system. And the secret to that is that's the Mike Ferry system. Okay. And under the Mike Ferry system is the Mike Ferry coaching system audio. Uh, this is not supposed to be here. I swiped it. 
And I swiped it and I posted it for Century 21 North Star people. And if you want to hear more about this, number four, past clients and center of influence. Uh, and that's my uh, describing kind of the same program. It's really good stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Listen to it while you're in traffic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. It's It'll play on your iPhone. You just, just go to this website on your iPhone and click it. It works really good. Really good. Okay, real quick, we do have a few minutes and I just want to run down this list also is uh, just some points on negotiating uh, contracts. I know people are heavily into negotiating contracts right now. So let's just talk about a few ideas with that. Um, and this is an interesting point here. If both parties, uh, you as the listing or the selling agent and the other agent, if both parties do their job right, negotiation is very simple. If both realtors do their job right, it's when one party does not do their job right when the negotiation becomes difficult. <clears throat> so what's doing your job right? A good listing agent has the property priced right and ready to show. A good showing agent has provided their buyer with a CMA and is going to bring a good, solid, reasonable offer. So the realtors have already done the work and, and got the the home in the best position to sell and the buyer in the best position to buy. And so negotiations are easy. If only. But let's see some more points on that. Uh, good negotiation means that you understand the sales process and that you understand the motivation of all parties, uh, especially especially your own party. And um we we have all the uh, we have all the scripts and and uh, worksheets and flowcharts on uh, how to determine their motivation. It's critical. So we got some points here. Almost every agent considers themselves to be good at negotiating. Most are not because they don't have uh, good negotiate good sales skills. Emotion and drama kill negotiating power. You've got to control what you say to the client. You've got to be disciplined uh, in this. Controlled yeah. emotions are an asset and uncontrolled emotions are liabilities. Right. Yep. You do it one time and you'll remember how that worked out. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing like the realtor flipping out over. It. <laughs> that's that's so all the you need. <laughs> the professional has to be the one that stays calm and collected. Right? Oh, and we've all seen it. And it's like a train wreck. It's not your house and you're not helping. You're hurting. And oh, gosh. Yes. So, yeah, don't don't get into it. Remember, you're not buying or selling the home. Yeah. Remember, he talked about being in the certain zone. You never want to go too high. You never want to go too low. You just want to stay right there in the middle. That's right. <laughs> right. So keep your emotions out of it. Transaction is not about you. It's about them. Uh, remember, you're not part of the negotiation itself. Don't let your commission be dragged into it. It's always on people's minds. The most agents who present offers are not great agents and not doing a high volume of business. Uh, therefore, the commission check is vital to them. And commission should never be part of the process. I constantly talk, talk to the agents they get all worked up when they're doing the negotiation. I say, look, you're not buying this house. This is just your job. It's not going to affect you at all. <laughs> it's, hard right. to, it's hard to keep your, you know, keep thinking of it that way. And it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a good point. Don't be afraid to ask them to accept the transaction as it stands. Um, some people take down have a, an aggressive stance and say, I'm going to get every nickel for my buyer or for my seller and, and all things like that. Or they're trained that you always you always uh, counter. Um, and that's not true. Uh, you do what's in the best interest of the client. You've um, you you thoroughly understand, you know, the motivation of the client. And if what to say, just maybe an offer comes in that meets the seller's needs as is. Uh, present offers professionally and objectively, point out the pros and cons, and perhaps accepting it without further negotiation is in their best interest. So th th those are things to remember. Don't make work for yourself. Don't make work for everybody. 
uh, if there's a good offer uh, to proceed with. Uh, both agents should have the same goal in mind, which is a signed contract. To find out if the goal is the same, ask all parties a lot of questions. Uh, and I wrote, call the other agent and ask if all parties are in agreement. Uh, um, a phone call between two agents can solve a lot of writing and back and forth documents and signatures and all of that um, can be avoided when a phone call said, you know, will they will they take a thousand dollars for to go to fix that themselves? And if the answer is yes, it's done. One one addendum. So don't be afraid to call that other agent and talk to them. Uh, keep your focus on what is best for your client and not on yourself or the commission you earn. Uh, when negotiating, look carefully at both sides of the transaction and get a better perspective. This creates a win-win situation. And yeah. uh, attempt to understand the motivation of both parties and how the motivation relates to each other. And I wrote, motivation is always the answer to the problem. Always refer to your client's motivation. Right. And keep, keep your ego out of the transaction. That happens. Uh, ego is a funny thing because you don't realize that that's the issue. It's hard to look yourself in the mirror and think, I'm, you know, what am I doing here? I'm, I'm trying too hard. I'm... Uh, you think you're somebody you're not. It, it, it's hard to self-realize that, but other people can spot it a mile away. So, you know, think about that. And it's not about you. Work for your clients. Do your negotiating via fax and phone. Don't spend your time running around trying to see everybody. I think the industry's gone away from that for the most part. But uh, in the old days, we were driving around like crazy. <clears throat> Uh, have your staff do this uh, for you if possible. And I think that was written. Uh, I think Mike Ferry wrote that because uh, a lot of people he coaches have uh, sell 50 houses a year and uh, and have another realtor or two. They have to have someone helping them. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. They have so, a staff. Yeah. yeah. So wouldn't that be nice? Have them bring it to you only if the deal is not going to be accepted. All right. Bring you the problems. Uh, ego, remove the thought, don't these people know who I am? Well, <laughs> they do know who you are and they're still not impressed. <laughs> so that's just another check, a check on the ego. Now this yeah, one's could, critical. That could bomb. <laughs> yeah, it can bomb. Don't burn your bridges with the buyer or the seller or the other agent. Uh, the deal may come back together. They, uh, deals come back together regularly. If if things if things fall apart, the first thing your managing broker is going to do is try to put the deal back together. Also, you're going to run across that agent again. Now, whether it's a seasoned agent that everybody runs across, or if it's a brand new agent who really messed it up this time, but is going to be a better agent the next time you work with them, um, give them the benefit of the doubt because you will run into them again. Yeah, we can't win every transaction we're involved with. So don't be too attached to the outcome. Let it go. Make a great professional presentation. And uh, if it's not successful, move on. So those are a few tips for the negotiations that uh, everybody's going to be involved in. Nick, how's it going in recruiting? I hear you making calls and yeah, talking, to, uh, talking to you got uh, several people in the works right now. Yes. Yeah. Lots of calls, lots of uh, activity, lots of meetings via Zoom and in person and in uh, each office. So, yeah, it's going really well. A few more today. Nice. Yes. Nice. Uh, not a lot of brokerages have uh, someone like Nick making phone calls, um, dozens of phone calls on a daily basis and uh, having an owner actually reach out to realtors. Um so that that makes us special among all the other things, the staff and the uh, and the agents that we have. What a great company! It is. Yeah. All right. Have a great week, everybody. I'll let you get back to work. Bye. Call us if you need us. All right. Thank you.